World leaders convened in Switzerland for the Ukraine Peace Conference on June 15th to the 16th. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky had called for a peace summit to present his 10-point peace plan aimed at ending the ongoing conflict with Russia. There is no nation that can stop such war alone. Unaided world leaders' engagement is needed. Zelensky's initiative came as a bid to halt the bloodshed and destruction that has ravaged Ukraine since the Russian invasion began in February 2022. His 10-point plan included proposals for a ceasefire, troop withdrawal and a commitment to Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. However, the summit faced a setback as Russian President Vladimir Putin declined to attend, citing disagreements over the agenda and the format. About 12 countries out of the 92 in attendance did not sign the final communique. The war has so far left devastating effects on Ukraine, while other parts of the world, including Africa, are bearing the brunt. And amidst preparations for the high-level peace conference came a shocking investigative report by the Wall Street Journal which revealed deep-seated plans that gave an indication that the Russia-Ukraine war may still be far from over. Young Africans being lured into Alabuga city to work at a factory where drones were being made and sadly several of them were injured in a recent drone attack aimed at stopping the manufacture of enemy drones. Among those injured are young people from Zimbabwe. The Southern African country's President Emerson Mnangagwa met Russia's Vladimir Putin during the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum where he clearly expressed displeasure with the West's support of Zambia. Russia hosted the 27th St. Petersburg International Economic Forum attended by over 120 countries, among them Zimbabwe, where Putin revealed that the development of relations with African countries is Moscow's priority. This announcement by Putin came on the backdrop of mercenary military group Wagner's rebranding into what is now called Africa Corps, with the same modus operandi that aims to expand Russian influence on the African continent. Operations of the Africa Corps in Africa are now effectively under direct supervision of the Russian Ministry of Defense. The choice of names Africa Corps is certainly a smokescreen for what Wagner has been known for for many years as its mercenaries operating in Africa maintain their loyalty to Kremlin, reports said. Under the Africa Corps, the new leadership of the group is most likely going to uphold the distinctive modus operandi that included the intertwining of boots on the ground with propaganda and disinformation while pushing forward some economic interests in mining. Mines and minerals expert Edward Simkonda has urged mineral-rich countries like Zambia to take immediate action to prevent the exploitation of their resources by Africa Corps. And Nason Msoni, leader of Zambia's opposition, All People's Congress Party, has warned that Africa will suffer if it allows foreign forces like the Africa Corps to invade and exploit their mineral-rich resources. Before the summit, Swiss President Viola Amert said there was no guarantee of success. And indeed, there was not.